Find the stationary distribution for the transition probability. Does it satisfy the detailed balance condition? Now the important part here is the detailed balance condition and we're going to unravel this in a second. Now I've already done a few videos on finding the stationary distribution. They're pretty explicit. Um, we set up a system of linear equations. So I'm not going to spend too much time on finding the stationary distribution, but I am going to go over the explanation of the detailed balance condition and how to, how to find if this transition probability fits that and um, our stationary distributions. So if you've watched those videos or from class, you remember that what we're trying to find is some kind of probability vector we'll name pi times p equals itself, right? This is to find the stationary distribution here. So where pi is a probability vector that needs to be a 1 by 3, right? Because we're working with a 3 by 3. And I'm going to kind of go over this quickly because the detailed balance condition really is the main point of this video. So what we're going to get set up with here is some kind of system of linear equations where, right, we're going to multiply this vector by our matrix we're given and then solve for that, noting that since this is a probability vector, we also can add this to our system of linear equations if they happen to be dependent. I'm not sure if this one is or it isn't. It doesn't really matter, but you can use this equation if they do turn out to be linearly uh, dependent or independent, and you should check this anyway at home alone. Um, and that will give you some more insight into exactly what's going on here but I'm just going to leave you with a system of linear equations. You can solve it at home, and then uh, we can go from there. So just finishing this up here, it looks like this, right? Whoops, this is a 2. Point 0.2z equals z, and then remember we can also use this here. So I plug this into a system of linear equations calculator, or you can do it on a TI-89, or you can program it on a computer, however you want to get that done. You can also do it by hand. Um, so this comes out to be 1 7th, 4 7th, and 2 7th. So now we'll get into this detailed balance condition, right? That's how you find the stationary distribution. Like I said, I've got more videos explaining that more explicitly because I kind of rushed there. But getting into the detailed balance condition, essentially what this is saying, right, is that the stationary distribution times a probability of x going to y equals the stationary distribution of that y going in reverse. So all we're really trying to say here is that the, the likelihood of us going from one state to the next is going to be the same as going from that state back to the back to the previous state in the long run. So it isn't really it isn't really a matter of of deciding uh, you know like what what the likelihood of it is or we don't have to do anything in reverse. We just have to simply check that this this matrix fits this detailed balance condition. And all you really need is your probability matrix and the long run distribution, which we already have um, with our vector pi. So we don't have to check every one, right? Like if we let x be 1, x be 1, and y be 1, then going from 1 to 1 is the same thing as going from 1 to 1, right? So we don't have to check 2, 2, or 3, 3 either. Now, like that, the same thing from going from 1 to, say, 2 is the same thing from going to 2 to 1, right? So it's not like we have to check each one and then check that it goes back to itself. We can just check this once, which makes this pretty nice because then we only have to check a few, a few states, right? So here I'll list the states. I'll start this off in green. So if we let x equal 1 and y equal 2, then what we're trying to find here is pi of 1, right? Just following this, following this definition right here, p of 1 to 2 should equal pi of 2 from p of 2 to 1, right? So we're going to look at our matrix here, and we want to go from 1 to 2, and that's 0.4, right? So here we have 
4 tenths. We know what pi of 1 is. It's right here. This is 1 seventh. And we want to see if these equal each other, right? So our pi of 2 is 4 sevenths. And to get from state 2 back to state 1, we want to we want to look here now and get back to state 1, we have a tenth of a chance. So this is 1 over 10. And this happens to equal 4 over 70, which equals 4 over 70. So for this first case, it works. I'm going to scroll down and continue doing these. Um, and essentially, we we only need we only need two more, right? So if we let x equals one and y equals three, and then we also wanted we want to check the jump from x equaling two to y equaling three. And like I said, if we check three to two, it's the same thing as checking two to three, right? Like you can see in this this first example up here where or the first portion of this up here where we used x is one and y is two that these correlate with each other, right? So it's not like we have to check tons of different ones. We just check these three and it's and it's finished with. So that being said, we'll uh, continue on here. And then this is going to go to three. So for when x is one, we want pi of one times p of one to three equals pi of three and the probability getting from 3 back to 1, right? So we know this pi of 1 already is 1 seventh. We can double check our transition matrix up here. And to get from 1 to 3, it's 4 tenths. And now we have 2 sevenths up here for pi of 3. And to get from 3 to 1, you can see here that it's 2 tenths. So this also equals 4 70ths. So this one checks out as well. So we'll give these some ticks because they both check out. Now let's check this last case here. So we want pi of 2, again following this definition of the detailed balance condition, times p from state 2 to 3 equals the long run probability for state 3 times getting from state 3 to state 2. Now we know that state 3 is 2 sevenths. We know that state 2 is 4 sevenths. And this is from our long run um, long run distribution here, or it's, it's also called stationary distribution. And then to get from 2 to 3, we're looking at 3 tenths right from our matrix there, and then to get back from 3 to 2, it's 6 tenths. And we can see that these both equal 12 over 70, so that works. And now this does... Concluding here, since we've checked these states, that they go, we go from one state to the other, back to, back to the other state is an equal probability then it, this does satisfy the detailed balance condition and we're finished.